Well, it's Sunday morning. It's been raining brickbats all night and all today. It's not raining at this exact moment. My plan was <clears throat> to go to the button patch and test out the uh, manicure a bit. I've been reading up on the manual. I've been looking at some of uh, my buddy in England, Paul C's videos. They're very informative. I ran across a new guy called the Brass Medic. He's in California. His name is uh, Mark Dayton, I think. He's got some really nice videos. Brass Medic. You can see the breeze is blowing. And then my buddy Thomas, he told me about a guy in Tennessee called a Tennessee Sharpshooter. Well, I've been scanning through some of his videos. And <laughs> this guy is a trip, boy. I like his videos. He doesn't go into a great deal of detail, but he goes into a lot of detail on things that you should catch on to yourself. That's what he does. He gives you little teasers. At least that's the way I look at it. He uh, shows you a little bit of everything about how it works. So he wants you to go in there and figure it out for yourself to a degree. Well, he's tested a, a gathering of the detectors. I mean, great Google Mooga. Tennessee sharpshooter. Hmm. Interesting guy. Anyway, we're going to do a video today on the Manticore and me. This baby is uh, what they call cam lock on it. No snap on little holes with brass doodads. This is all adjustable and it has a tension thing right there. You tighten that up and then you unlock it or lock it in, in place. It's a tension setting. That, now that's a pretty damn cool feature, in my opinion. Especially if you swing, in other words, if you swing it like this, some people like to tilt it this way. And that gives you the ability to do that. If you're left-handed or right-handed, you can, you can shift this baby around left or right. Man, that's pretty damn cool. I think. When I got this detector from Ron, I told him I wanted some more proof headphones. He said, okay. He sent me some of these. Thresher. Of course, I haven't tried them out yet. And I'm not going to try them out yet. I figured out to get this thing over. So that's just a thing that tells you this and that about it. Let me see where, where the hell did I put them? I've hit them from myself. Oh, there they are. It's like everything else. It's got to be hung up with something else up here. There we go. We might as well bring these other ones in here too. Oh. Well, here they are. Thresher. They got drain holes in them, which I am going to tape over before I ever use them. And we'll go to the beach one of these days. We're not going to the beach for a while. Damn, I got a visitor. Look at that. He's having dinner or breakfast. <laughs> and while we on headphones, these are the ones that come with the bio lab. 
manacle. And I got them all hooked up, figured out how to pair them and all that kind of stuff. But they're really nice and soft. Not like that cheap crap you got with them other than my lab heaters. Nice head thing, I like them. I'm gonna use them tomorrow maybe. What else have we got? I did find a, hunting in the dirt the other day, I found that the roots would grab the cool cover and pull the cool cover off. I had to put the cool cover off four times. I'm gonna put some wire ties on that baby today. It's got a nice arm cup, flexible, adjustable with that do that thing right there. All in all, I like it. Hi, boo boo. What are you doing this morning? Anyway, that's uh pretty much it. Like I said, I've been reading the manual. Watching Paul's videos and Brass Medics and the Tennessee Sharpshooter. I'm very much more informed. When I go back tomorrow, I'm going uh, all terrain where I was before, multi tones. I'm going to hunt in high conductor, low conductor. Max sensitivity, enhanced threshold. I like a threshold, so I don't know exactly where it's going to be yet. This thing has a setting where you can turn on the vibration with a handle. If you want the handle to vibrate when you hit a target, you can do that. I don't see me trying that though, but that is a, a feature that's added to this baby. Let's see, we, what else we got to talk about here on Manicore? Hmm. I told you that and I told you this, and we're gonna go to uh, Enhanced Multi. I don't know. We'll have to think about that. Get back to you. In the next video, we're going to do a video on me. 2023. I'll bring you all up to speed. Where we've been and where we're headed. If anybody knows that, where we're headed, Park. Stand by. Well, I kind of sit back and wonder after going to the button patch for the first time in a year or so. I did not expect to find hardly anything. You know, we've been hunting this spot for a long time with the eat with the, what do you call that thing? The SE Pro and we had the uh, E-Track and the CTX when Jack was a baby. I used to take Jack over there and he'd run all through the woods. When we first started play, hunting this place, it was all woods. It had some uh, cart paths all through the woods and we believe this was probably like a logging site. Only, only reason we believe that is because after digging 400 million shotgun shells and bullets out of there, we started finding some ax heads and splitting wedges and a few other ideas like that. Anyway, the fellow who owned it a couple years ago, I don't know, four or five years, he cut all the trees down and you couldn't hardly get in there for the weeds that grow up after the trees are gone. Well, he, he did some modifications to it. So I said, well, hell, I might as well try it. Not expecting to find a damn thing. It was a beautiful day. 
I'm not ready for the beach yet. So I figured, what the heck, we'll give this Manic a spin. I just turned it on, I charged the battery up, turned it on, all terrain, general, no ground balance, no noise cancel. You saw the results. Now, can this be a machine that's capable of doing something like that, that all these other machines could not? That's what I don't understand. I mean, I, I'm truly amazed at what I found. And it, but is it the machine? I mean, what else could it be? This place has been hunted to death, as people refer to sites that, that are hunters a lot. I don't know. This is what I know. But how we can improve the detection experience for our value detectorists. The Manticore delivers on all of those things. You want more power? You want more strength? You want more depth? You want more finds? This is the machine for you. So, Mark, tell me about the new product. Well, we've made a powerful little beast called Manticore, and it uh, really has a lot of extra power that it's putting into the ground, and that lights up all the targets in the ground, and that lets us do a whole heap of uh, decision making in a better way. And we display that to the user with a 2D ID screen, and we have a new way of showing it with the audio as well. So, all of that wrapped together has just made a fantastic next level product that's going to blow people away. And blow the way I was. And still am. I'm truly amazed at this manicure. And you know, I've been a mild lab guy for a long, long time. We started out with the Sovereign. We went to the Excalibur, Excalibur, the Blue Sword Excalibur, like the dumbest ass I am, when the Explorer 2 came out, I mean, the uh, Ex <laughs> Excalibur 2 came out, the green machine, I sold my sword to my buddy Ben in uh, Kentucky. Boy, that was the worst mistake of my whole life. There's never been a detector on the market today that was as good at the beach as the blue sword Mine Lab Excalibur. Curry Storm put together a fine package when he got that thing in that tube. But anyway, that's life over the dam. Now we've had two or three more Excaliburs and what do you call those things? SE Pros and SE some damn thing and E Tracks and CTXs and Noxes. I even bought a Fisher 75 one time and a some kind of Garrett. But now we got with the Manicore. We'll see what the future brings. <laughs> I can't believe it. Well, it's really gotten worse now. Look at that guy. <laughs> it's blowing about 20. Heavy rain. Rough as bricks. I don't like it. Well, <clears throat> this part of the video is going to be about me. I'm a helper. <laughs> let's, let's, let's start out from a... Uh, a health standpoint, you know, I've been battling this prostate cancer for a few months. And I'm going to say that with the modern medicine, the time frame that <clears throat> we caught it, and the doctor's opinion, uh, everything seems to be on line where they want it to be. PSA has gone down to way below one. It's in the low zero zero two threes. 
I take a fancy Zytigo pill every day, <clears throat> and I get a hormone shot every three months. Some people are affected more by the hormone shot than some. But to me, it's just a few hot flashes now and then. Some people have terrible hot flashes. <clears throat> but I'm in lucky in that regard that same with the radiation. I took nine weeks of radiation during the summer. That's the reason I didn't hunt at all. Not that the radiation bothered me at all. Some people say you won't be able to hunt, you won't be able to work, you won't be able to sharpen knives. Well, that wasn't true with me. I could, I did everything I wanted to do. I didn't have any that I know of effects from the radiation. <clears throat> now this fancy pill I take, Zytiga, it's a PSA to testosterone type. I guess you call it cancer drug, I don't know. Uh, if you read the side effects of it, you wouldn't take it at all. But here I am again. <laughs> I don't have any effects from that either. I didn't get to the beach much because when you have problems like this, you have to pee every 90 minutes, sometimes every two hours. Sometimes at the ocean front, you can't do that unless you're in the water. That's why I kind of stayed to the bay. No big waves, I could go in the water and pee any damn time I wanted. I don't know how that's gonna affect me this summer, but we're gonna check it out, you know? I have another, I only have uh, two more hormone shots, and I only have to take the drug till November. Other than that, I think, like I said, we're, uh, as a Doc Holliday told Wild Earth and Tombstone, you're right as rain. John Wick did a good job. The termites are, well, I ain't gonna say they're non-existent, but we think they are. Who knows about termites, you know? We'll have to wait and see how that goes. We got uh, the rain has uh, maybe dropped out a little bit today. It's still blowing like hell. I'm just sitting here in the recliner, taking it easy. I got some knives to take back to a restaurant at the beach, but I may not go till tomorrow. I got loners down there, so they're not out of knives. You know what I mean? I carried up some loners. Other than that, uh, my health is okay. I stay busy with the damn knives, as you know. I mean, busier than I ever expected to be. I have like 18 or 19 restaurant accounts. I have eight or nine restaurants that are what I call random. They call me every three or four or five weeks, six weeks, a month, two months when they're dull as bricks and I have to go show over them. But if I had them all at one time, <laughs> I couldn't do it. I like it like it is. I got a farmer's market on Saturday. I got a farmer's market on the first and third Thursday of each month coming up in April. My big Wednesday farmer's market, I decided to not go on Wednesdays. That was every Wednesday from April through November, and I just didn't have enough time to do some of the things I wanted to do. So I gave that to my buddy, Low Tide Tim. I taught him how to sharpen knives, you know, seven or eight years ago, and he works the Shore Drive Farmers Market, O'Connor's. There's another one in Hampton. I can't think of the name of that one. Now he's, now he's going to take over uh, what we call the Talbert Park Farmers Market for us. So I'll just be at King's Grant on Thursday afternoon and Old Beach Farmer's Market on Saturday morning. That'll give me more time to hunt with the manacle. And like I told you in the first part of this video, this is gonna be a fine heater. I know it's a fine heater for the beach. I mean, for the dirt already. 
And if it don't rain too hard tomorrow, if it's not too muddy, I may give it another spin. But I'll tell you one thing. I think it's going to be a gem at the beach. I make mind-boggling gem. <laughs> but I'm only guessing. What else we got? We got health, or we got uh, manicure. Hmm, I think that's about uh, all there is. Yep, I think that's it. You know, I got the new little Hooter Hooters. You saw them the other day. This little guy right here, that's Lambo. And that is the greatest thing that ever happened to Dottie. Man, they get along like it's unbelievable. And you, can you see Boo Boo over there? Boo Boo's on the sofa. Catman Do, the wild furrow cat. She's not too furrow anymore, though. <laughs> yes, he's a big black boo boo. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to go back and watch a few more videos. Maybe pick up a few more pointers. <clears throat> I just talked to the Mumbles man. His manicure hadn't come in yet. What else we got? Knives, manicure. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. If I think of anything, I'll add it. Stand by.